Arthur Alexander Folks. <laughs> I was born in Matthew Town in Agua on the 11th of May 1928. My first job was a linotype operator at the Nassau Guardian. Trade as they called it then. Every summer we used to go to some person. Would you believe one summer I did tailoring with, with Mr. Bingham? But um, I did some of the Tribune and at the Guardian, and when I left school, I went to work at the Guardian as a linotype operator. And then later on, I went to work at the Tribune as a linotype operator and then as a journalist. I don't know if I had this natural inclination, but I think it was the state of the country at the time. I couldn't live with myself if I didn't do something about it. And one of my beats as a journalist was to cover the House of Assembly. And so I had a full view <laughs> of the goings on. And, you know, um, I said, no, no, no. <laughs> I had to do something to change conditions in my country for my children and for thousands of other children who would come behind, you know. We, we couldn't, we simply couldn't leave the country like that. I think if we, if we, if the country was in good shape, I think I might not have got into politics. But it was something I had to do. I joined shortly after the party was formed. Because um, along with a, a, a lot, some other young men, and we gradually became more involved. And this group that we had, uh, we used to meet and talk politics. And then we realized we had a meeting of minds. And then we became a political force inside the party. Um, so much so that we even, we formalized ourselves uh, into, into a committee called the National Committee for Positive Action. We borrowed that from, uh, from Kwame Nkrumah in Ghana, because he had a similar. <laughs> but we, we were the, radicals, I suppose, because the PLP at first, as you know, was formed by some very nice people. Um, um, but we had to take it a step further and make it an instrument for really radical change that the country needed, you know. But right after we won in 62, the collegiality that we had so close and so, so warm and intense during the struggle, sort of evaporated and there was this cult of, of the personality that started to develop around um, Selinden and well that wasn't too bad but then he started to act you know to drag his feet and you know to make you know to be, to be unilateral and all that sort of thing and to do some things we didn't agree with and also to, to drag his feet on some things that we thought were very important. At Lewis Yard, we were talking about these things, I just mentioned to you, we were, com we were complaining in the party about um, the, th the disappointments and all the rest of that. And we thought, and it was just before a convention. And so we went to Lewis Yard to talk with our brothers and sisters there, all in the party, this is not a public, you know. We went to Lewis Yard on a Sunday afternoon to have this meeting to explain to our followers the problems we're having in the party. And just after the, the, the minister finished with the prayers, the fellows in the front row, whom we knew quite well, <laughs> these are brothers, you know, they, fo they got a folded chairs, these were folding chairs, and they came onto the stage and they started to beat us. And Cecil, I think, was stunned. And I took him by the arm and the blood was running down his, his head. And I led him out and we were, and there was a policeman, I won't call his name, standing in plain clothes at the door, at the exit. And he did not lift a finger. So then we realized we were in trouble, that we were entering a new kind of phase in politics in the Bahamas. Um, great sorrow actually, you know, 
up to that point, we had not intended to leave the body. We were trying to bring things to a head inside the body and try to get Solyndon to see, see the light. But I guess, you know, <laughs> it's gone beyond that point, as you just mentioned now, it is, you know, if you can't fish, get. An uprising, somebody tried to stab Cecil, and, and a, a man in the in the crowd who was supporting us put his hand up and got the, the knife in his hand. I can't remember his name right now. It may come. It may come to me. And he became a, a devoted follower of Cecil from them. But they, and I must let say this: I, the policeman McDonald. Fields, I think, yeah, Fields. He he was he was very good. He saw the requirements of the moment, and he got some others, and he formed a, a, a cordon to, so that we could walk through the crowd to our car, to our cars on Parliament Street. But that was frightening. So Lewis Yard had beat up. <laughs> It was, it was not easy. We were still hanging on to PLB. You know, we had put a lot in, into that. I put, I put a lot of years and a lot of sacrifice in, into this. And we, you know, you don't, you don't walk away lightly, you know? And even in the by-election in Andrus, we called ourselves a free PLB. <laughs> and then afterwards, you say, you know, you know, we might as well just form a party and have it done with it, because this is getting nowhere. And we sat down, we decided to form a party. And we invited all the other parties to disband. And have their members could choose to join us. Jeffrey John Stone, who, and this is an important point because there's, 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 there was a rumor put out or there was a talk put out that we merged. That's not true. When we formed the FNM at Jimmy Shepard's house, I think it was the night of October 21st, I believe. Um, Jimmy Shepard's house in Fox Hill. There was not one UBP politician in the room. We wrote the constitution and we discussed the platform, which I later drafted, that night. It was surprising the support that we got, you know, so quickly because, you know, going up against Lyndon, the prime minister who led us in majority rule, that was like the Americans going up against George Washington. <laughs> sure. We went up against him at the height of his power. 
but still we got we got some solid support across the, 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 um, the board in, in the country. And we made the announcement in the usual way, my press release and all the rest of that, and, and we had meetings and we, we were surprised at the support we got. Now we, it, didn't, it didn't delude us into believing we had <laughs> zero. <laughs> but it was something again that we had to do. And I've seen some in journalism sometimes they say the, the FNM party, that's, that's, it, that's not good usage. It's the FNM or the party. Um, freedom was uppermost in our mind I, it, because we were being, we were challenging this cult, this one man cult. Um, and I guess I, one of the reasons why we talked about free, freedom, free, and we wanted to make it, make it clear this was a national party because we've had fly by night parties forever, from way back. Up to now, <laughs> that were never really national parties, but we were announcing that we are a national movement, and that is what we did. And I remember we were in we were in a, in a, a place when we were looking at the at the law, election law, and I saw you know they have all the symbols here, and I said, goodness gracious. They actually left the torch in this list for, us, for, for, for somebody to choose because the torch is so rich in symbolism. You know, I, I thought they might have taken that out so nobody could use it. <laughs> so we, 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 we seized on the torch right away. And then we got somebody to stylize it for us. It's right in the law, in, 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 the, in, the, in, the, in the act. And we got somebody to stylize it for us and we made that awesome. But in national, we also meant to say that we are finished with the divisions of the past. We are all Bahamians, Nassau people and family island people. Now, this is the out island, we've changed that in the constitution. To indicate that we finished with those prejudices, black and white, all Bahamians together. We want to be, this is the kind of vision we had for the future. I guess my colleagues realized that I had a, a talent um, with words. I could manage to string a decent sentence. <laughs> That's why when, when, they, when we wanted a newspaper, I had to leave the Tribune. Nobody else could do it or would do it, so I had to do it. And then they had another shock. And I remember it was in the 62 election. The, 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 my first political speech in a schoolroom in Fox Hill. Now, I am an introvert by nature. And I've, I'm, I'm not an aggressive, you know, outgoing person. And I got up to speak and the crowd was responsive. And my, my, my friends on the side were looking at me, and the, the crowd really got, you know. But the thing is that I had something to say. I knew what I wanted to say, and I had, I had the, the grounding in, in, in the language to say it in ways that they could understand. So my colleagues just the, um, um, said, to say, well, well, damn, the boy could talk too. <laughs> So, so I was called upon to, to, to write, and I've written any number of documents throughout those years. And of course, to speak. And so I had to go up and down. I have, I have spoken, I believe, in every island in the Bahamas. So I think that was my principal contribution, taking the message. Um, we read. We informed ourselves about the system under which we were governed. So when we, when we, when we got there, there were no surprises like that for us. We knew about cabinet government than it was then. It was important then, but it's even more important now because we are saturated with American news. 
Because if all we see on TV is them, pretty soon we will come to believe that we are them. We start to talk like them, we start to act like them, we start we imitate them. And that would be very problem that that has become very problematic for us in our politics. That's what I was saying earlier. So I would suggest the young people who want to get it, learn about your read your constitution and learn how our system operates. And we have a good system. We Bahamians, we, we are we are the most fortunate people in the world. We have all of these various threads, European, our soul, African, but we've woven this beautiful tapestry with all these different threads to make us who we are, the Himian people. And we are the most talented people in the world because of all this, this, this rich genetic pool. That's why we do so well in sports and in the arts. So again, um, I hope everybody in this room knows about them. Uh, the, the old Bahamians who contributed, like, like um, Bert Williams. Bert Williams was long before Sidney Poitier. He was a vaudevillian actor, singer, Bahamian. Left the Bahamas, went to the United States. Paul Mears, who was the greatest cabaret dancer of his, er, of his time. And he said when he moved, it was like, it was poetry in motion. And I don't need to tell you, tell you what's happening in sports. For a small country like the Bahamas, with less than 400,000 people, there's some countries who would be glad to have the record we have for gold medals. So we have so much to be proud of, but we have to know our history, know our roots, and take care of them and nourish them. Thank you. tonight at the Atlantis Ballroom for the final day of our convention. f and so are you excited? Tonight, as we get started, I would like to recognize our party leader, the mo our party leader, the Honorable Michael Pintard. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for our party leader. Our deputy leader, the Honorable Peter Tanquest, and our Deputy Leader Elect, the Honorable Shannon Don Conroy. <laughs> our Chairman, Carl Kulmer, and our Chairman Elect, the Honorable Dwayne Sands. <laughs> we have in our presence today, tonight, our former leader and former prime minister, the Right Honorable Hubert Alexander Ingram. We'd also like to recognize our former prime minister, the most honorable Hubert Minnis. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight is going to be a treat of your life. So those of you talking and viewing in your living areas. We want you to grab your popcorn, 
Grammy, you could get your cane and get your, your painkillers because when you shake a leg, it could be on tonight. <laughs> Travis, Travis wanted me to do the honor of saying that we have the honorable Tommy Turnquest in the Make house. Make some board. noise, everybody. Hello. We got everybody home tonight. Everybody is home tonight. I would just like to say that we are so excited with our party officers, those who currently serve, and the ones elected today, y'all. We ready? Make some noise for the newly elected FNM party officers! We'd like to have a good time here all night, but we're here to talk about the business to get us ready for the future. We know that we can do nothing without our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So to bring the, the opening prayer is Reverend Dr. John C. Wallace, newly elected. But don't tell no one I said so. But please put your hands together for our Reverend Dr. John C. Wallace. Thank you very much. Good evening, FNMs. I am not too good at hearing these days, so let me say that again. Good evening, FNMs. First of all, while you're standing, I want to express my thanks and my gratitude to my FNM family and say a special thank you for re-electing me to the office of Assistant Chaplain, one more time, to serve you, and it is my honor so to do. Secondly, let me say congratulations to all of you who ran and won, and all of us won. Um, if you did not, if you are unable to serve, you have still won. But congratulations to those of you who will be at the front of this party, and I pray that God will bless you as never yet before. And before I pray, don't rush me. Before I pray, we have to make sure that we put God first in everything that we do. Where did God declare, seek ye what? First, the kingdom of God, and everything else shall be added unto you. We can have all evening to do that. So. I want to challenge our leaders with a word from the book of Joshua, chapter 1, and verse 7. I want to challenge you, Joshua, chapter 1, verse 7, just that one verse, and it says, Only be thou strong, it says, in the Lord, that you may observe to do according to all of the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. And here's it. Turn not to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper wheresoever thou goest. So if you want to see prosperity, stay with the Lord. Let us pray. Our God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, our shelter from the stormy blast, and our eternal home. Most wise God, we come this evening giving you thanks. We lift our hands and we lift our voices and say, oh, give thanks unto you, Lord, for you are good, for your mercy endureth forever. We thank you for bringing us to the closing now of our convention. And Lord, we thank you for everything that has been done, and particularly what has been done today. And we thank you for all those who have been re-elected and elected to serve this great party. I pray, God, that they will be guided by the words of God, that they will be strong and courageous and do the things that will bring glory and the honor to your name. We thank you for those who have served in the past, and we pray, God, that you will continue to bless them and strengthen them. And may they be the undergirding force to those who will now serve. 
that they, oh God, will give them the things that will cause them to be better than they thought they could ever be. I, pre I present this session before you now, Lord. I pray your blessing upon our leader, our deputy leader, our chairs, and all the other officers. And I pray, God, that they will be guided by you for the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and you are delighted in all of his ways. Bless us as we go forth this evening, that everything that be said and done be done and said to the honor and glory of your name. And when this evening comes to a close, we'll be careful as to give your name the praise and the thanks, the honor and the glory. For we ask it in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. And God, you taught your disciples when they pray to say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. And together we say, Amen. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the singing of the national anthem of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. and receive our newly elected chairman-elect, Dr. Dwayne Sands. Please be seated. Let me pay respect to our party leader, Michael Pintard and Mrs. Pintard, to our newly elected deputy leader, and Mrs. Cartwright, to our parliamentary caucus, to our previous leaders of this great organization. And I see Mr. Orville Alton, Tommy Turnquest, and Mrs. Turnquest, our leader and previous prime minister, Right Honorable Hubert Alexander Ingram, to party officers, both outgoing and incoming, to FNMs from across the length and breadth of this wonderful country. Ladies and gentlemen, the people listening all, of, all over the world, good evening. Two hours ago, we completed the count 
at Holy Trinity, and at the end of the day, I am now tasked with my first duty as your chairman. I am humbled, I am honored, I am privileged to stand before you tonight, having received the support of so many delegates to become the chairman of this great free national movement. I contested for this role with two consummate gentlemen, and if you would permit me the liberty to ask them to stand. Mr. Ellsworth Johnson and Mr. Michael Folks. My task tonight is to welcome you all here. Tonight promises to be an exciting occasion as we conclude what has been a phenomenal convention 2022. FNMs, as we have completed our convention, I am reminded that there is a huge amount of work for us to do. We are challenged not just with repairing and rebuilding this organization, but we are tasked with preparing this great country for the transformation that is to come. There have been two episodes in our history, 1967 with the attainment of majority rule and then deliverance in 1992. We are about to usher in the next revolution, the next quiet revolution in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. And under the leadership of Michael Pintard and the newly elected executives, this great organization will be ready, prepared to change the lives of our Bahamian people. I want to say again to you, thank you. There have been so many people that have supported me in this journey. I want to single out my wife, Larika. The rest of my family, my constituency association of Elizabeth. You have been amazing. You have been supportive. But tonight, let us conclude what has been a marvelous experience with our FNM family. May God bless you and good evening. FNMs! Party leader, the Honorable Michael Clifton Pintard and Mrs. Pintard, our new deputy leader, Dr. Shannon Dawn Cartwright, immediate former deputy leader and former deputy prime minister, Min member of parliament for East Grand Bahama, K. Peter Turnquest, former party leader and former prime minister, the most honorable Dr. Hubert A. Minnis, former Prime Minister and former party leader, the Right Honorable Hubert A. Ingram, former party leader, the Honorable Tommy Turnquest and Mrs. Turnquest, Chairman, our new Chairman, Dr. Dwayne Sands, Convention Chair and Co-Chair, former Senate President, 
Senator the Honorable Dr. Mildred Hall Watson and Ethan Adderley, Lady Naomi Wallace Whitfield, wife of our founding father, His Excellency Ambassador Maurice Moore, known as the firstborn, MCMs, party executives, council members, the Women's Association, the Torchbearers Youth Association, delegates, foot soldiers, FNMs, and Bahamians, good evening. Honoring our past, celebrating our achievements, charting the future. Under the leadership of successor Wallace Whitfield, His Excellency Maurice Moore, Jimmy Shepard, Sir Arthur Folks, Curtis McMillan, Warren Lavarity, Elwood Donaldson, and George Thompson, the free national movement was birthed. Our forefathers were men of immense courage, men of vision, men of tenacity, and men of skill. These men were the embodiment of sacrifice, of commitment, and dedication. The lives of these selfless and honorable men contextualize and exhibit the purpose of why this party was formulated. Our party was formed to ensure that all Bahamians get a fair and equal opportunity in this country. This endeavor came, of course, with great opposition, much violence and victimization. Our founding fathers were threatened. They were pushed, bullied, but they remained committed to building a better Bahamas for their children, for our children, and for future generations. They never wavered in faith. They never relented, and they never gave up. Martin Luther King said, and I quote, the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort or convenience, but where he stands in times of challenge and controversy, end quote. FNMs, 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 we were born into opposition, but know this, the opposition has made us stronger. Opposition has made us wiser. Opposition has made us more skillful and more impactful in governance and in leading this nation. From 1971 to 1992 and now to 2022, we are celebrating 50 years. It is due to sound decision making, excellent crisis management, and good leadership that we are at this place. It is no secret, FNMs, that the Bahamas has experienced some of the most severe challenges ever in its short history. The FNM has never flinched in the face of tough decision making, especially after Hurricane Dorian and in the global pandemic. The FNM government acted with immediacy and created policies to secure families so that businesses would thrive and our economy would rebound. Our free national movement is replete with significant milestones in this country. When the, vir when the virtual learning platform was launched and introduced by the former Minister of Education, the Honorable Jeffrey Lloyd, before the hurricane, before the pandemic, that speaks to vision. When the Ministry of Finance rolled out our digital fiat currency in Exuma in 2019, that was a bold and a progressive move under the leadership of former Minister of Finance, K. Peter Turnquest. The Bahamas was the ninth country at that time to produce our own digital currency backed by our central bank. England then followed our lead. That is what you call visionary. History has shown us that it was the FNM administration that navigated us successfully out of the 2008-2009 global financial meltdown under the stellar leadership of former Prime Minister Hubert A. Ingram. That, FNMs, is visionary. It was the free national movement that pressed for change in the inheritance laws to enable equal treatment of both male and female children 
talk about equality. That's the FNM under our under the stewardship of Dame Janet Boswick, one of our female political pioneers. It was also the FNM that insisted children were entitled to the maintenance of their parents according to their means. Also fought for by Dame Janet Boswick. FNMs, that is what you call visionary and progressive. Anybody remember those light outs and blackouts by BPL? It was the FNM government that stabilized the power generation on New Providence through the major asset installation at Clifton Pier site and reduced the cost of electricity to consumers by approximately 40%. FNMs, we are a great party and we are still the best choice to govern the Bahamas and chart the way forward. We have done it before, and with the help, with the might, with the wisdom, the strength and strategy of the Almighty God, we will do it again. FNMs, everything rises and falls on leadership. Everything rises and falls on leadership. We must become as our national pledge suggests, one people, one party, united in love and service. Our leader, the Honorable Michael Clifton Pintard, must have our unwavering support. It does not matter who you voted for in the last leadership convention. He is our leader now. One thing about the Lord, he specializes in taking the underdogs and making them the top dogs. He specializes in taking the rejected and making them the celebrated. It does not matter who you voted for. We have one leader and we will support him and the team that is newly elected. We will rally around our leader and our team. We will bring our resources our influence, our creativity, our ideas around the table so that the FNM can move forward, upward, and onward together. FNM's unity releases victory. FNM's unity invokes victory. FNM's. FNM's. Come on, FNM's. God bless you and God bless the free national movement. God bless the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. Proper protocol already being established. Good evening, everyone. 50 years ago, eight courageous men, known as the Dissident Eight, whose symbolic shoulders we stand on today, gave birth to the free national movement. A delivery that was not premature in timing, but long over its due date of justice. After years of labor pains and pushing through political contractions, our forefathers were able to cut the umbilical cord of the free PLP, and the FNM took its first political breath. There was no epidural for this delivery, Dr. Sands, but brute endurance amidst intense political activity and powerful emotions which rapidly mushroomed into the party we've watched grow today. In those most critical formative years of development, the FNM took its first steps, said its first political words, and blazed a trail toward national development. These moments came at a time when Bahamians looked for the light. Light illuminated by a free spirit of courage. Light ignited by a national vision for all Bahamians. Light blazing a movement of boldness and burning desire to deliver good governance. Bahamians needed a free national movement of light. The irony is, in that transitional year of 1971, 
we chose the torch as our symbol, a torch that would indeed light, ignite, illuminate, and blaze a flame to deliver our country from darkness, a flame that is passed on from generation to generation, FNM leader to FNM leader, MCM to torchbearer, yesterday to this very moment in time, a flame that I, among every one of us here today, holds in our hearts, guided by the light of freedom, forward, united. Fast forward 50 years later, we find ourselves on the helm of a technological revolution that is changing the way we live, work, and relate to one another. In-person school traded for virtual learning. Business meetings exchanged for virtual meetings. In its scale, scope, complexity, the transformation will be unlike anything humankind has experienced before. Over the next 30 years, we'll need to address some of the most critical global challenges of our generation, from climate change to food security and agriculture. We need to grow significantly more food using less land, less water, and less waste. Tonight, as we are hosting this convention, the spirit and vigor of our forebearers are here. Our light will not be diminished, nor can we allow it to be put out. We accept our place as the opposition and commit to hold as our priority the needs of our people. The fact is, we've persevered in the face of far too many unforeseen tragedies. For those who don't remember, Hurricane Andrew in 1992. It was the FNM who brought relief to thousands of citizens. We can't ignore that. After 9-11, it was the FNM that worked to ensure that our borders were safe and Bahamians were kept insulated from the negative fallout. We can't ignore that. During the 2007 financial crisis, it was the FNM that facilitated one of the largest infrastructure undertakings, exercises that this country had ever seen which allowed our economy to stay afloat through developed countries, although they were heavily impacted. We can't ignore that. And how dare we not forget Hurricane Dorian in 2019, the most tragic and costly natural disaster of our country has ever experienced. We can't ignore that. Two years into the COVID-19 pandemic, it was the FNM that kept Bahamians safe secured vaccines, and supported families experience economic hardship. We can't ignore that. There is no magical quick fixes, and despite the criticisms of our administration, our government made bold and often unpopular decisions to protect Bahamian lives. My fellow Bahamians, they would want you to believe that we did nothing in our past terms but ask the thousands of Bahamians who lost jobs and faced economic hardship, who benefited from government assistance food program and COVID-19 unemployment assistance programs. We did that. The government's Access Accelerator program ignited the entrepreneurial spirit of young Bahamians, resulting in an explosion of new small business owners. We did that. While the world forecast doom and gloom, your FNM government saw opportunities in the midst of adversity. We were bold and relentless in our pursuit to protect the livelihoods and quality of life for all Bahamians. Yes, we did that. On this, our 50th anniversary FNMs, I want to speak especially to millennials and Gen Z, the future leaders of our country. The future is not something to predict. It's something we must actively curate and cultivate. I encourage you to embrace the vision and ideals of the free national movement. We are the party of real change. We are the party responsible for the mass digitization of government services that save family islanders from traveling to Nassau for essential services. We are the party that invested heavily in technology, fisheries, and agriculture which by extension opened doors for Bahamian ingenuity to thrive. We must find creative ways to reduce our imports, enhance our export of our Bahamian goods and services. Forward United. 
We must own our Bahamas, from developments on our land to fishing in our seas, forward united. We must become a leader in emerging markets like digital currency, AI, and social media, forward united. FNMs, we must cheer and applaud young global Bahamians like the Chantelle O'Briens, the Jamal Rolls, the Theodore Elliots, the John Quell Jones in our society. We must be ensured that they are not just rare, but the standard moving forward. And so FNMs, what is our charge for the future? Forward United, as we support the future of finance through cryptocurrency and blockchain. Forward United, as we support innovation in clean energy and the environment and smart communities. Forward United, as we support creativity in business. The creation of business idea banks, crowdfunding, small business, big business apprenticeship programs. Forward United, as we transform Grand Bahama in technology and new industry. Forward United, as we invest in agriculture, hydroponics and aquaponics through the entire archipelago of the Bahamas. I envision the Bahamas where you are not just defined by your political affiliation, but by your talent and your contribution to the development of this Bahamas. Young people are not just the future, we are the present. We are that generation that will embrace change, innovation, technology, good governance, and transparency in leadership to affect real change in our communities. To you, the delegates of this great party, may we do our part in protecting the legacy of the FNM while embracing our youth, embracing change, and forging new pathways that strengthen our resolve as a political organization. I put out this call to all FNMs and party supporters. Whether you are successful FNM, the Suxkendal FNMs, the Hewitt Ingram FNMs, the Tommy Turnquist FNMs, the Dr. Minnis FNMs, and the Michael Pintard FNMs, let us press forward together because we are just one FNM. We needed successful to be bold and courageous, establishing the foundation we see today. We needed Sir Kendall to push us into destiny in 1971. We needed Hubert Ingram to deliver good governance in the sunshine in 1992 and 1997, Mr. Ingram. And we needed Tommy Turnquist and Dr. Minnis to heal a sick nation in the midst of a health crisis, to heal and lay the foundation for the new Bahamas, Dr. Minnis. But now we have a new leader. And with our new leader in the person of the Honorable Michael Pintard, whom I believe will move us forward, united into the future. Honorable leader, we needed your forward vision and we need your innovation. We need, Michael Pintard, your ideas, your passion, your energy, and your leadership. We need you, Mr. Leader, to demonstrate through your activism. We need your courage and your vision. We are ready to take this new Bahamas bus ride to Bay Street in Parliament Square. We in the FNM party need you to chart the way forward to a Bahamas forward together. We need you, Michael Pintard, to inspire and motivate us to be our best. We need you to hold that flame that burns as a bright beacon light of hope. You are our leader. We stand behind you and we are with you. We commit tonight to move forward as one party, ignited and fired up. Forward United, forward United. Association Miss Vanessa Squire. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm getting. It's 
always easy to quit. It's easier still to walk away. But it's easiest of all to blame others for our failings and downfall. Standing on established protocol, ladies and gentlemen, f &Ms, good evening. The free national movement has never had an easy road. Nothing has ever been handed to us on a silver platter. We were forged in struggle and a need for change. We moved forward against tradition, internal strife, and preconceived notions of what change should look like. For 50 years, we have persevered. Despite challenges seemingly on insurmountable odds and often misplaced egos, we moved forward. We rose upward, moving onward to leadership and governance. We stayed together. We, the FNM as a party, an organization, a movement, a family, have faced every obstacle in our way, be it man-made, or an act of nature, be it local or global, we have risen to the occasion time and time again to emerge stronger, better, united, and determined to move forward for the good of the people. To put the needs of the country first, even though it might not be the most popular thing to do. We have learned to sacrifice the short term for a stronger, richer, more sustainable long term. And we continue to emerge from the fire, refined, united, stronger, prepared to serve the needs of this great country, ready to ensure the welfare of our citizens and willing to change and adapt to propel forward into the future for global success. Burning with the desire to light the path for all Bahamians to see themselves as a part of a greater economic growth, better educational opportunities, and a part of a cleaner, more vibrant environment. A healthier people, a happier people, a more prosperous people. Yes, we have recently suffered a devastating loss at the polls, and we have heard the cries of the people. Now is not the time for doubt. Now is not the time for egos. And now is certainly not the time to second guess who we are. f &Ms, now is the time to stand tall and proud of our heritage and our accomplishments. Now is the time to stand united in our efforts to again provide trusted leadership to the Bahamian people. Now is the time to be united in our purpose, that of moving forward to serve our country with consistency and transparency. Now is the time to speak with one voice as proud Bahamians, proud f &Ms. Now is our time. We may be sitting in opposition, but we are still able to let our voices be heard loud and clear as we rise to the challenges facing this nation. f &Ms, in recent months, we have seen an unpleasant and unfortunate rise in domestic violence and abuse against women. Violent crime is on the rise, with murders being committed almost daily. We must agitate 
for the law and policy makers to pass legislation that will protect our children and our women by ensuring that stiffer penalties are in place for these heinous crimes. We must agitate for the enactment and enforcement of laws already on our books. Physical abuse often carries with it mental, verbal, sexual, and emotional abuse. We must break the silence. We must speak up and speak out. The time has long passed when we turn a blind eye and a deaf ear. The time has long passed when we hang our heads in shame for acts perpetrated against us. The time has long passed when we cloak our family members and others in their wrongdoings. The time has long passed when we ignore the early signs of violence in our sons and daughters. We must take responsibility for the well-being of our children and teach them that it is not okay, it is not all right to fight and abuse each other. We must show them love and teach them how to love so that they are better able to deal with conflict and become better adults. f &Ms, we are in this together. And as the old African saying goes, it takes a village to raise a child. So must we understand and appreciate that it will take all of us, Bahamian, regardless of political divide, working together to unite and heal our country. We must, we must ensure that we have initiatives, programs, and laws in place to not only protect, but also to develop the whole person, body, mind, and soul. We can and we must eradicate domestic violence. Now, as it relates to our party, we must learn to discard the baggage of factions and mistrust. We must rebuke the demon of jealousy that prevails. And we must humble ourselves to accept advice, encouragement, and constructive criticism, knowing that it is for our growth and development. We must learn to listen to the people. We must see the talent in our young women, our young people. We must bring new faces to the forefront. And we must utilize the talent and expertise of our women. Oh, it is all good to brag that we hold many firsts for women in the nation. But tell me, what have we done to continue the trend since setting the hallmark? Tell me. This f and party must not cease in its efforts to attract and retain qualified young women who can sit at the nation's decision-making table and have a say in the course that this country takes. To the leader and the newly elected party officers, I challenge you to not let your egos get in the way of rebuilding and restoring this party. I challenge you. I defend them. You defend them. I challenge you to work together, agree to disagree, and remember that it will take more than 51 party officers and 498 delegates to win the next election. Remember, this will take all is of fire. us. Inclusive of the 40,000 f and that stayed at home, it will take all of us to bring this party to victory. Let us heal. Let us unite. Let us move forward, upward, onward, together. 
May God bless our party, and may he continue to bless the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. This girl is on fire. Flame within. Friction is the most common way to create a fire. Sticks and stones are often used, but for me, I've only been good with my words. They channel the embers inside and help me to navigate forward. My words are the beacon of light that guide on the straight and narrow. They bring warmth to a cold-natured world and allow me to never lose focus. The flame is affirming. It's grounding. It empowers me to keep on going on the days that are filled with uncertainty and nights when the breeze is still as silence. My words are the propane needed to fuel me on the journey to come. When friends are filled with sorrow, when tired, wears them down like a full day at work. These words be affirming sparks created to help them bloom. Be reminder, be reminder to never give up, give in, or give out to the challenges of life. Because life is not conquered by fears, but belief in oneself and knowing the fire is here. It's present in me and you and everyone under the breath of purpose. Let your words be filled with joy. May they illuminate the rooms you host. May your passion, like fire, help guide in reviving our sight, our unity, our strength, as we journey into new terrain. Forward, united, with fire, with words. Thank you. Come on, f and -Ms, you can do better than that! Come on! Anybody here from the Family Islands? I Family Islands, 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 make some noise! He's a fan of she's a fan of Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stage! All the way from Sea Breeze, Maxine Seymour! Anybody, Senator. I see red, red, red on everybody! Party leader, the Honorable Michael Pintard, Mrs. Pintard, and little Michaela. Former f and leaders, the Right Honorable Hubert Minnis, Honorable OAT Tommy Turnquest and Mrs. Turnquest, and the Most Honorable Dr. Hubert Minnis, our new Deputy Leader, Mr. Cartwright and Mrs. Cartwright, our new Chairman, Dr. Dwayne Sands and Mrs. Sands, all newly elected party officers, meritorious council members, Bahamian citizens and residents, I greet you in service and solidarity. As we, the f and celebrate 50 years and contemplate the way forward, we must be mindful that we live in a changing world. This week, we watched as the Soviet Union invaded Ukraine. Europe is standing by for what may be the largest continental war in decades. The impact of what may appear to many Bahamians as an unfathomable war in a faraway land will be felt by us all as the cost of gas and transportation, food and commodities will undoubtedly go up. While it's too early to draw lessons, what we know to be true is that if only leaders had come together earlier, had negotiated, made concessions, found middle ground, 
and come up with mutually beneficial solutions, we may not be standing here to witness what may be the Third World War. All of this at the heels of a pandemic that has devastated our economy, compounded by hurricanes and natural disasters of epic proportions. Our world is in trouble. We live in a time where citizens everywhere are hurting. Families here in the Bahamas face what many worry about worldwide. How will we pay our bills, feed our children, pay for their education, ensure our families' safety, cover medical expenses, save for retirement, take care of our elderly and loved ones with disabilities, pay tithes, invest in our future, and enjoy the little downtime that we have left. The challenges we are faced with can at times feel overwhelming. For many of us, life is not easy. Some of us are feeling hopeless and afraid of what the future holds for us and for our country. The FNM was formed for challenging times. Our forefathers came together 50 years ago to be the solution to the problems our country faced. Our party has always tackled issues head on with sound ideas, clear thinking, and the courage to take action. The torch remains intact as it has been passed from one generation to the next. As we chart the way forward, we must come together as FNMs, heed the words of our anthem, and pledge to excel in love and unity. You see, unity is one of the basic prerequisites to change. The dissidents, united. The suffragettes, united. There is strength in unity. Once we are united as a party, we can unite with PLPs, DNAs, the coalition, and others to address the issues that plague our country at a national level in a nonpartisan way. In opposition, we have to partner with the government on solutions that make sense and benefit the people. We serve to ensure that the needs of every Bahamian family are met and that they are able to function autonomously. As my pastor regularly reminds us, the family is the wellspring for all institutions. And if the family is right, then institutions and the culture will be right, as many of the negatives and positives of society are traceable to family life or lack thereof. But before we can unite with others to make a difference, we must unite as FNMs. Now is the time for us as FNMs to unite from within. We can no longer allow ourselves to be in the same party and not speak to one another. We must move beyond the fact that our candidate of choice was not ratified to run in a particular general election. We must move beyond the fact that the person we supported for a party officer role was unsuccessful. We must accept and support our new leader. November is long gone, and the future awaits a united FNM. We need to come together and do what the dissident eight did. They united to fight corruption, injustice, victimization, and tribalism at the hands of the PLP. We must get along with each other and set our personal differences aside for the betterment of the party, our party. FNMs, we need to put pettiness aside for the good of our organization and partisanship aside for the good of our beloved country. How are we going to unify as a people when we are not unified as a party? If we cannot get along with the people beside us, those who are wearing red, those who ascribe to the torch, who campaigned with us, who are members of the same organizations and ascribe to the ideals of the dissident eight, then how are we going to get along with the others? How are we going to hold hands across the Bahamas to better our country when we don't get along with the people in the same constituencies as us, the same youth and women's associations, the same WhatsApp groups, the people who worked with us to bring good governance to this country, those who fought alongside us to usher in the victories of 1992, 1997, 2007, and 2017. We have to sweep around our own front door first, FNMs. Unity begins at home. When we are united, 
We can address the issues that concern our people. How is it that in a country where women are viciously assaulted, in a country where sex traffickers prey on young persons, in a country where persons cannot enter a religious institution to pray without the risk of being fatally shot by a stray bullet, where some persons do not have food to eat, where a mother is not safe from harm while caring for her infant, in a country where we are paying 10% for fat on bread basket items and medication, where inflation is so high, where we can barely afford to put fuel in the tanks of our vehicles, where there is homelessness and helplessness, where children and seniors are being abused, a place where persons with disabilities still do not have sufficient rights. How is it in a country with so much to do, so much to accomplish, that we still waste time tearing each other down as FNMs and as Bahamians? Like the dissident eight, we have to say enough is enough and take a stand to make our country better because we don't want what the PLP pipe dreams are. We don't want what they're offering. We don't want what they're selling. The FNM was started because a group of men was opposed to the PLP corruption and tyranny and wanted to deepen democracy and establish good governance in our country. It would have been easy for those men to just stay with the status quo, to stay in the PLP and get themselves and their families fixed up. You have to understand that when our forefathers started our party, they were straight. They were among the friends and lovers. They could have easily benefited from the deals of the day. It would have been easy for them to stay in the PLP and ignore the needs of the masses, but they decided to unite and take a stand, and that is why we are here 50 years later. That is why they served, and that is why I serve. That is why all of us serve, because we want our country to be better for our children, for our grandchildren, for our great-grandchildren, and for generations unborn. The Dissident Eight wanted the country to be a better place in which to live and do business. They wanted it to be a Bahamas for all Bahamians. They were hopeful for the future. They saw how, as a united force, we could add value. They saw how we could bring solutions. As inheritors, we must continue to fulfill the mandate set out by our party's founders. We must focus on the bigger issues and not be distracted by the smaller ones. We need to stop using time and energy FNMs to focus on the things that don't matter, like bringing each other down. We have to be the change we want to see in our country. We have to move this country forward. We have to ensure that successive generations of Bahamians are able to feed themselves. How could this government, who say they care, discontinue the National Food Distribution Task Force? How could they add 10% fat to bread basket items and medicine? How could they forget that while they feast on four-course meals in five-star restaurants, Bahamians are eating noodles day in and day out because that's all they can afford at this time. It does not matter what our politics is if we are not safe and we live in fear because of crime. It does not matter what our politics is if little boys and girls are molested by persons in our country who get a slap on the wrist for their offense. It does not matter what our politics is and this is the very point we keep trying to get across to this New Day government to help them understand that when you pull a contract, when you fire a Bahamian, it does not matter what their politics is because there's a ripple effect across our country and in our communities because when you take bread out of the mouth of one of your own citizens because you think that they don't have the same favorite color as you do, you are creating the most heinous of crimes and that is a crime against humanity because it does not matter what someone's politics is. Because if they clean up the beach, or if they clean up the park, or if they clean up the side of the road, then pay them. Pay them for the work they have done, because it does not matter what their politics is. What should unite us are the principles on which this great party was formed. What should unite us is the pride we have being f &Ms. and what should unite us is our dream of a better Bahamas. The PLP said, vote for us. This is our blueprint. We are going to do all these things and more. Yet they raise taxes on the most vulnerable with more to come. Now it is our duty to hold them accountable 
It is our duty to hold their feet to the fire. It is our duty to make sure that they do what they said they're going to do. But we cannot work hard to make sure that they are accountable to the Bahamian people until we are accountable to ourselves and to each other. Unity, f and is not a catchphrase. It's not a word. It's not a banner. It's not something we project on the screen for three nights of convention, and then when we go out, we still hate and hurt each other. Unity is something that we have to live out every day. When people come to you wanting to say something negative about a fellow f and don't entertain them because you don't have the time for that. Remind them that the children in our country, the little girls and boys, are still not safe in their neighborhoods. Remind them that there are people in our country who don't have food to eat, people who are unemployed. Remind them that persons with disabilities in our country still don't have equal opportunities. Let them know that you don't have time to hear anything negative they have to say about anyone in this party because there's too much work to be done for you to waste time gossiping with them. We have a duty to continue to give this nation its first and its best in various key sectors. We have a duty to continue to liberate our society, to continue to advance the cause of the vulnerable, to help the Bahamas modernize and move forward as a country. We have a duty to make sure that our country is the best country in the entire world. Let's bind together with each other. Let's bind together with cords of love that cannot be broken with other Bahamians across the divide. And let's move forward united. f and we have a duty to carry out the dreams of our forefathers and the visions of our young people. This party needs unity. The Bahamas needs unity. And we are the party that can unite our people. f and let's put our differences aside. Let's truly move forward united. We will hear from our leader this evening. We will hear his vision for our country. Let's get behind him. Let's support him. Let's work to retake our country back. Forward, united. f and may God bless you and may God bless the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. Come on, ladies and gentlemen, I stand to your feet.
FNMs. I can't hear you. FNMs. Our party leader, in his absence, our new deputy leader, also in his absence, our newly elected chairman, meritorious council member, former prime minister, the Honorable Hubert Alexander Ingram, former deputy prime minister, and my mentor, the Honorable Desmond Bannister. I see Lanisha over there. And firstborn, of course, Maurice Elijah Moore. And all those under the sound of my voice tonight, good night. I want to begin tonight by sending a special shout out to my lovely wife, Heather Lewis, who's watching from Freeport, and to our lovely daughters, Imari and Jasmine Reen, Meldora Lewis. Yes, I have a five months old baby. Yes, five months old, I'm still a young man. The problem is, she's subjected now to a 10% VAT on everything. Baby food, formula, clothes, everything imposed by this new day government. What a shame. Also to the best constituency in the country and by extension, the best constituents, Central Grand Bahama. It's been a pleasure serving you over the past five years and I look forward to making you even more proud and I thank you for continuing to put your faith in me, trusting that I will always put your best interests first. FNMs! FNMs! It is a good day to be a member of this great party. The party of successful Wallace Whitfield. The party of Maurice Moore. The party of Sir Arthur Folks, Of Warren J. Laverty. James Jimmy Shepard, Curtis McMillan, George Thompson, Albert Donaldson, our party, our great FNM. It was just 50 years ago that these brave men took up the mantle of freedom and courageously, they courageously opposed Sir Lyndon Pillenden at the height of his power. They didn't want to be in that one man ship anymore so they decided to get the hell out of the boat. It was here that the free national movement was birthed and the vision of a more progressive Bahamas began to take shape. See, they weren't in it just for the fun. It was about life and death. It was about survival. And if you don't believe me, ask Maurice Elijah Moore what happened in Lewis Yard on that fateful night. Thank God your life was spared. It, however, would have been more than two decades before our great party would see governance under the leadership of Hubert Alexander Ingram. It says that this race is not for the swift, but he that endured to the end. I think we should give our party a round of applause. <laughs> FNMs, over the past few months, we have been turned upside down and inside out. We couldn't predict the wholesale defeat that we will suffer on that fateful day, even shame to say it, September 16, 2021. Some say that was a beating, others say that was a cut. I can't say that word on the stage. But FNM is the time to point fingers and the place blame is over. Now is not the time to falter and turn on one another. It is time to dig our heels firmly into the rocks and stand firm together. It is time to reignite the torches. In the words of Sir Cecil, the same valiant spirit who had helped us to bring about the change in 1967, those same spirit can fire us up again. Let's get fired up, FNM, fired up and ready to go. FNMs, in order for us to move forward united, we must first ask ourselves, where did we go wrong? And what did we miss? What have we learned over the past four and a half years? And even more so, over the past five months? How are we going to use what we learn for the benefit of our party? The past is the past. You can't change it. All you can do is learn from it and look forward to the future. We lost the election, but we must move forward 
united. I lost the leadership race, but I move on with my party, forward, united. We are one party, one people with a shared vision. The FNM dedicated itself to establishing a government that truly reflects the political, social, and economic aspirations, not of some, but of all Bahamians of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. And even today, we hold steadfast to that commitment. The past is our lesson. Let us learn from it. The present is our gift. Let us use it. And the future is our motivation. Let's get fired up, future. Come on, Torch Baron. You are our future. Get fired up and ready to go. Use FNM. What does this mean for us FNMs? It means we must prepare for battle because the road to governance is not for the weak. When we were voted in office in May 2017, we outlined an ambitious and progressive vision for the future of our country, the Bahamas. I must thank the great people of Central Grand Bahama once again for trusting me, not once, but they say two times consecutively. I hope to continue to serve you in whatever capacity you allow me to. You know, I wore many hats during my term in office. You may call me a chameleon, if you ask. As a substantive minister of youth sports and culture, I hosted a round table, the first of its kind, with industry stakeholders and all living former ministers were invited, all 17, including myself. You know, we discussed sports development and sustaining programs, youth initiatives, the orange economy, the cultural policy, corporate partnership and scholarships, community outreach, the need for grant writers, and the importance of the integration of youth, sports, and culture. Even then, I recognize the importance of saying to our former leaders, thank you for the contribution to the ministry. Thank you, Minister Bannister, you showed up. Thank you, Minister Roll, you was there. Thank you, our new leader. Thank you, even numero uno, Kendall Nordy showed up and he made his contribution. I appreciate all of the input that you would have shared with me. The onset of the COVID-19 pandemic did not only dealt a pressing blow to the, to the country's health system and the economy, but it also took away one of the strongest threads that bind us as a people. That is the thread of sports. Sports in the Bahamas across the, and across the world helps to develop feelings of patriotism and unity amidst division and struggle. And this whole world is now faced with division and struggle. As an Olympian, having participated in the 1996 Summer Olympics and the 2000 Summer Olympic Games in Sydney, Australia, I can identify with the athletes. I know the blood, sweat, and tears that our athletes invest just to have a chance to perform on the global stage. These athletes have always served as goodwill ambassadors for the country, giving their times, their bodies, and love of country for a chance to make us all proud, and that they do. Just look at Shawnee Miller Uibo. Look at the boy from Abaco, Stephen Gardner. Come on, Abaco, give it up for Stephen Gardner. The Golden Girls. Yeah, I see the Abaco boy from Cooperstown, former prime minister, he's clapping for the Abaco boy. Show your appreciation. I know, I'm sure you appreciate that. The Golden Knights. Yeah, my good cousin, I'm gonna claim him, Buddy Heal. Yeah, my mother's a heel, and I always claim the heel in the Lewis family. John Quell Jones. Eight Mile Rock, DeAndre Aiden, Kai Jones, and Jazz Chisholm, to name a few. Our athletes, ladies and gentlemen, continue to elevate the reputation and image of the Bahamas through their tremendously outstanding performance and representation. Yes, give our athletes a round of applause. And you know, even though the other side insists that the FNM, that we are not FNM, we are not athlete friendly, let me tell you about history. It was the FNN government under the leadership of the same gentleman sitting in front of you that started the Athlete Subvention Program. Yes, come on, that's important. We were setting the stage for rewarding our Olympic and other national athletes with the accolades 
they deserve. We still have to pay them, but we still at least give them something. Today, today, facts. We pay out some of the highest prize money and other prizes in the region and in most of the larger countries of the world. Pay out higher than Jamaica, higher than Canada, higher than the British um, over in the United Kingdom. Usain Bolt, three gold medals and made less than $40,000 from Jamaica. In the Bahamas, one gold medal is 40000 And that was as an effort of the FNM. And I repeat it, it was the FNM government under the leadership of Hubert Alexander Ingram, who they say he didn't know how to run his mouth. But you know what? The athletes that ran, he supported them. I remember Mr. Desmond Bannister giving Mr. Bannister a round of applause, who was the president of the B3As, who elevated sports to the next level. You see, we were setting the stage for rewarding our athletes for the accolades that they deserve. We were also seeking ways to develop international, our international cultural footprint, including monetizing John Canoe on the national and global level, and that's very important. At the time I left office, Percy Vola Francis and Eddie, Fast Eddie Dames, were finalizing a white paper on just how do we monetize John Canoe. We left so much to do. But ladies and gentlemen, I don't know about you, but it's still the people's time and it's still about your future, and we will deliver. The destination has not changed, but the road less travel is what we must take. But we were faced with so many challenges, from inheriting a failing economy to devastating natural disasters and unprecedented historical events that no other government had ever been faced with. See, this now government met an economy under uptick. Truth be told, this is one of the first time a new government could come into office and not have to worry about the treasury being broke. They met a fat treasury, thanks to our vigilance and our fiscal policies. How do you think they're able to make multiple trips to Dubai and jet set all over the world? They are now in Dubai again. But I submit to you tonight, Tonight they're in Dubai, but in five years it'll be bye-bye. We, we suspended travel for all government ministers and diplomats. Meanwhile, myself, a two-time Olympian, chose not to go. In fact, our policy didn't allow me to go. I really wanted to go to the 2000 <laughs> Games in Sydney and in Tokyo. You know, I cut my eyes and I said, but you know what, at the end of the day, is about the athletes. The money was spent on the athletes and the support team. It was their time to shine and shine and shown they did. Gold medal, Shawnee Miller-Webo, gold medal, Stephen Gardner. The COVID-19 pandemic has since caused us all to change the way we operate, the way we plan, the way we execute, the way we dream, and the way we move forward. We can no longer take any small issue for granted. We must engage our supporters, listen to them, and put those concerns into actionable initiatives. We must chart our vision for our future and plan how we must execute them. We must implement training and development to ensure the next generation of standard bearers are ready to take the torch forward. But how do we do this? We must go to the source. We must ensure that the national youth policy is updated and implemented. This will protect our children and empower our youth. We must put incentives in place to not only stop the brain drain, but give Bahamians a reason to want to return home and be an active citizen in our development. We must empower the TYA if we truly want to strengthen the party and prepare our future leaders. We must give them space and opportunities opportunities to prove themselves. Yes, we must strengthen our women's association, increase their representation, secure their rights, and allow them to use their skills, talents, and most of all, influence to grow this party and by extension, create an even better Bahamas. Come on, women, you can give yourself a better round of applause for that. The future of the FNM is in this room, watching by way of television on social media, 
The future, they are the ones who will carry our vision and our mission. But the important thing is they must be supported. Now is the time. We have a short window to ensure the FNM is the only viable option for the next government of the Bahamas. And with this team, yes, and with this team of hungry men and women, I can't see how we won't make it happen. Ladies and gentlemen, fellow FNM, the past, as I close, is behind us. Let's learn from it. The future is ahead. We must prepare for it. But the present is here. It's about time we live in it. Forward, united, FNMs. Good night and God bless you all. Good night, good night, good night. FNS, let me hear you make some noise. No, 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 that nah, ain't sound like it. Let me hear you give God some praise right now. If you're thankful for life, let me hear you give God some praise right now. Let me hear you say hallelujah. Okay, I put up in a, then I kill the beat. We been through hell and back. I know you feel the heat. Wait, yeah, I know the streets are feeling.
Anybody from Grand Bahama in the building? I can't hear you. Anybody from Grand Bahama in the building? We have Abaco in the building. What about Exuma? Cat Island? Eleuthera? Michael? Anybody from Elizabeth? We got St. Barnabas in the building. <laughs> Nassau Village here? <laughs> Is Nassau Village here? Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. Listen, we have reached to the portion of our program where we, you know, we get into the meat of the service. We're getting ready to receive our leader. But some things happen before the leader comes. And the Spirit revealed to me that the leader is not prepared to come to a body of people not ready to receive him. Hallelujah. Talk, man. Talk. Oh, hallelujah. Tell Please, it. we need you to be ready. We need your pom-poms to be working. We need your fingers to be working. Any fingers working? Any fingers working? Let me see the pom-poms. Let me see the pom-poms. Travis, take it away. And Nicole, listen. We, we know what it is to be knocked down, but not knocked out. Woo! As a FNM, I tell you everywhere you go, I tell them that any FNMs in the building who know that there's an FNM and they ain't never scared, that you as an FNM today, tomorrow, and will always be. We have any FNMs who don't sell out in the building. We have any FNMs who's an FNM when we are in government and when we are in opposition. Because the FNM party is the best party. The Free National Movement Party is the only party. Come on, FNM. Ladies and gentlemen, it appears that everybody is in the building tonight. We have our founding farmer, Father Maurice Moore, is in the building tonight. We have Lady. Naomi Wallace Whitfield is in the building tonight. We have the right honorable Hubert Ingram in the building Papa, tonight. Papa, Papa. They call him Papa. I think Papa is in the building. We have our former leader Tommy Tanquist in the building tonight. We have the former Deputy Prime Minister Desmond Bannister in the building tonight. We have a former chairman and former ambassador, my mentor, Sidney Corley is in the building tonight. We have members of parliament, members of the Senate, former members of parliament and candidates in the building tonight, and members of the Honorable Senate. But ladies and gentlemen, I think we are missing two positions. Uh, I think the deputy, the deputy, we have a new deputy, y'all. Ladies we and gentlemen, sound the bell. There is a new deputy in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. And he is about to grace the stage next. Ladies and gentlemen, stand to your feet and let us welcome the newest deputy in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, the Honorable Shenandoah Cartwright. He is our next. FNMs! 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 Thank you very much. Party leader, the Honorable Michael Clifton Pintard and Mrs. Pintard, parliamentary colleagues, Former leader, former Prime Minister, the Right Honorable Hubert Alexander Ingram. Fellow Senators, I see the former leader, Tommy Turnquist here. Let's give him a round of applause. 
meritorious council members, newly elected national officers, FNMs, ladies and gentlemen, Bahamians everywhere, good evening. I stand before you tonight grateful to Almighty God, who's allowed my life to be a testimony of failures and victories, struggles and triumphs to the glory of his name. I subscribe to an often used quote, may I never forget on my best day that I need God as desperately as I did on my worst day. I indeed would to like to thank my wife of 75 days <laughs> for being here with me. I thank my mother for being here as well tonight. FNM's fellow delegates and Bahamians across the length and breadth of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, 50 years after the founding fathers of the Free National Movement set in motion a pursuit for greater ideals, greater empowerment, and greater justice for the Bahamian people, we assemble here on this final night of this convention, moving forward united as a party, poised to deliver on the promise of a transformed Bahamas. In our election of a new slate of national officers, the work of the Free National Movement and the furtherance of our thriving Bahamian democracy begins anew. We have picked ourselves up and we will fight our way back into the hearts and minds of the Bahamian people. Fellow delegates, there is no nobler cause than service to your country and your countrymen. And I stand here tonight humbled and honored that this convention has elected me to join hands with our leader, Michael Pintard, to serve as deputy leader of our great free national movement. I salute my parliamentary colleague, the member of parliament for St. Anne's, Adrian White, and I thank him for his ongoing service to our party and our country. I want this convention to know that the inescapable magnitude and responsibility to our party, our people, and our country has not escaped my conscience, my commitment, nor my reverence. I pay homage to those who have walked the historic halls of the Free National Movement as deputy leader, from successor Wallace Whitfield to the Honorable K. Peter Turnquest. I thank the Honorable K. Peter Turnquest, too, for his wise counsel, support, and service to his party, and indeed, his country. <clears throat> to fellow FNMs, our leader Michael Pintard and I share a common belief in the power of people, their sacrifices, and their value. We will listen to you, we will consult with you, and we will act in one accord for you. I congratulate the other newly elected officers here tonight. We will work together to foster and usher in an f &M resurgence on our patriotic quest to serve the Bahamian people as the next government of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. We are here to serve you, and that is something we shall never forget. To Bahamians everywhere, the Free National Movement was on assignment these past three days, and today we concluded the second part of our renewal. Now we begin the diligent work, the much needed work, of restoring your confidence in our capacity to bring the transformational change to our nation that has been long desired. Under the leadership of Michael C. Pintard, you have our commitment that we will work tirelessly through well laid out plans and a vision to advance the dreams and aspirations of the Bahamian people. I believe, as our leader does, that we will not be perfect, but we promise that we will be perfect in our attempts to do right by the Bahamian people. We will be champions for the poor 
and working class Bahamians to be innovative and present the big generational ideas and catapult our global standing. FNMs and my fellow Bahamians, there are moments in a nation's history that summons from within the people and from the people a leader who has defied the odds, whose journey is unlikely one, is an unlikely one, an improbable one, but one that time and a moment has given way to. A bold fighter for the people, a compassionate leader, a leader who is passionate about the people of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, a leader who sees his interests as inseparable from the people of our great country, a man who believes in the empowerment of the poor and the working class, a leader who asks not if it's possible, but who works to make it possible, a consensus builder who understands that we are better together, a transformer, a merchant of big ideas and possibilities. FNMs, we welcome to this convention my leader, your leader, our generational leader, Michael Clifton Pinton. FNMs. I'm pressing on the upward way. Please be seated. <laughs> Parliamentary colleagues, past and present, former prime ministers, the Honorable Hubert Alexander Ingram, The Honorable Hubert A. Minnis, former party leader, my childhood friend Tommy Turnquest and Mrs. Turnquest, former Deputy Prime Ministers Peter Turnquest and Desmond Bannister. And firstborn, Maurice Moore. And Sir Cecil had a powerful woman who stood with him in good times and in bad times, Lady Naomi Wallace Whitfield. 
and to all of our meritorious council members, the Women's Association, the incredible and dynamic TYA, all of our party officers, and of course, to all of the elected officials who today have put us on a course where we will return to government in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. Ladies and gentlemen, throughout the length and breadth of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, it is an honor to address you tonight at a pivotal time in both our party and our nation's history. Before I continue, let me say what many of us who have been in public life for a while realize. That at times when no one is available to hear the complaints or to soothe the pain, it's good to have a boo or a snooks at home to make it better. So I want to say tonight, Burleys, my daughter, Michaela, who's here as well, how much I love you and appreciate what you've poured into my life. Thank you. Let me also say to my mother who's watching at home, Sister Laura Perline Benson, how much I appreciate your love, but more importantly, your prayers. If you'd permit me for a very brief moment, I'd like to tell you a quick story. We moved many times in my life. We lived in Coconut Grove and we lived through at least seven different corners. Key West Street, Jenny Street, Washington Street, 7th Street on Coconut Grove Avenue, Florida Court. It was an interesting experience when a bus driver on Sunday after Sunday school asked you, where am I dropping you this week? <laughs> I didn't know we were struggling because of the affection of my mother. I tell you, there's something about these Bahamian women, how strong they are, and why I find it absolutely incredible that a government can't uh, put on their agenda the issue of making sure that we do not violate our sisters, our mothers, our daughters. We moved in Yellowell at some point, and my mother would be in the kitchen, it was hot. If a fan blew, it was blowing the, blowing the air that happened to be hot. And she would be cooking and praying and thanking God, and I would be in the hall watching her with a curious look, clearly on my way to a Christless hell. And, and my mother would be saying things like, God, I praise you, I magnify you, I just give you thanks. And I couldn't understand why. We were in a hot house, uh, the space was tight, her husband was in the nicest fella at the time, and she had some bad children, chief among them me. But over time, I realized that my mother was thanking God because she had a peace that passed all understanding. And FNMs tonight, even against the backdrop of September 16, I have a peace that passes all understanding about the future of the free national movement. And if we pull together, if we turn to each other instead of on each other, victory is assured, no, not for the free national movement alone, but for the people of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. Because we are here, not on our behalf, not to accomplish any childhood ambitions. We are here to make sure we retool this organization, reconnect with our supporters, energize a base that was more than lackluster in the last election, and then return to government so we could do right by the Bahamian people. Forward, upward, onward, together. And so tonight, 
I want to begin by thanking all of the delegates who, first in November and today, put in place a dynamic team to make sure that we are able to retool this incredible organization that we are blessed to lead. Let me be clear from the beginning, in case there are any illusions, the road ahead is a difficult one. And we have to be prepared to keep the fate. We have to be prepared to stay the course. We come from a rich tradition. In fact, we are in the 50th year of our political existence. And the men and women, our four fathers and mothers, made incredible sacrifice to make sure that you and I are here, standing on their shoulders, attempting to walk in some very big footsteps. They made a lot of sacrifices. Some of them lost their livelihoods, standing up for political change and social justice. A number of them took incredible risk, and it cost them. Sometimes it was isolation. It was much easier for them to just simply go along with the program and enjoy the creature comforts that were likely to come with being in a powerful organization. They counted the cost. And they made a determination that they were prepared to take the risk to go in a different direction. And you know and I know some folks that aren't prepared to risk anything now, even though the odds that we face pale in comparison to what they face. But yet they stayed. And they've been faithful FNMs. Many of them unto their debt, others who still live today faithful to the cause. Nowadays, uh, Sometimes those that join the organization, if they have one bad experience or someone say something to them or look at them in a certain kind of way, they are transitioning elsewhere. But we've had some folks who have lost much, have taken their last dollar and invested it in our organization, and they have stayed the course. They've been good to us even on days where we weren't good to them. It's important that we keep the faith. So FNMs tonight, I wish to say to all of those that ran, there is a place for you in this organization to serve. The outcome of the election places in a formal sense persons in positions. But you and I know there are so many untitled leaders in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. I want to say as clear as possible, we need you. We are stronger with you. We are weaker without you. Sometimes things don't go your way. I've been down that road a couple of times. I remember uh, going on an assignment. I believe it was in the place where my mother was born. I was absolutely certain, based on two rounds of voting in a relatively safe seat, no, an absolutely safe seat, uh, that I figured I was a shoe-in. But I was sent on a mission. Ked Island Rumkey in San Salvador. Is Ked Island Rumkey in San Salvador in the house tonight? Let me hear you. And I didn't go grumbling or pouting. I went like the soldier I am in good company with freedom fighters like you. The bottom line is, even if for a moment I didn't think being sent on that assignment that the person who was sending me wasn't in my best interest, I never ever lost focus of the fact that they were in the best interest of the Bahamas. Many times we are narrowly focused on what's in it for us, and that's important, don't get me wrong. Each of us attempt to build a quality country to make sure that our family is living in an environment that is safe and that the options for prosperity are great, that's wise. But we must also have a commitment to a bigger cause and be prepared to make sacrifices 
so that the organization succeed and by extension, the best vehicle for change is ushered into governance and I believe it's us. So I'm asking you amidst any frustrations you may have privately or those known publicly, I'm asking you to keep the faith, stay the course. We need you. We are weaker without you. The dissident eight, you have heard the incredible story of the sacrifices they made. Imagine for a moment, laboring in the uh, political vineyard for decades, not being victorious, but nevertheless staying. The passion wasn't sucked out of them. They still had it and they fought on. The hope that a better day was ahead and despite the fact that it didn't come in a timely manner, they fought on. FNMs, it is that same spirit. It's that same metal that we need to summons tonight, tomorrow, next week, next month, to make sure that we could once again, once again, return to the street where we live, the neighborhoods that we walked in the last election, to the very door that didn't open for us when we knocked on it, or to the same gate where the only thing visible was a pit bull in the yard. We need to summon that same kind of spirit to return, to atone, and to ask for support. Think about this for a moment. The dissident eight and all those that accompanied them was taking on a system a powerful political organization that had just ushered in, think about it, ushered in majority rule. They counted the cost, they knew what they were up against. But they also detected something. They detected something that unfortunately is fairly consistent for politicians sometimes. They detected that a spirit of arrogance among some was setting in. They detected that some uh, got in the business of serving themselves rather than serving the population that delivered them into a rare place, the Parliament of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. They sensed a spirit of entitlement and they were prepared to go a different way. And so the values that they held sustained them in the fight. The ideals that they fought for, they were prepared to pursue it, to either reach it or die trying. It is that same spirit that I'm asking FNMs to summons and to hold on to. And in celebrating our forefathers, we must always celebrate our foremothers, Althea Sands. Patsy Anderson, Irma Williams, Hilda Antonio, Dame Janet Boswick, Dame Ivy Dumont, Louise Bosfield, Yvette Bethel, and so many more. This is not a battle that one or two won or could win. It's important that all of us appreciate that each of us in this organization have a role to play if we are going to be successful. And so I ask you to keep the faith. Tonight, we have a wonderful opportunity to hit the reset button. And I wish to have a candid conversation with you. I am aware that some others are listening. So let me take care of some housekeeping matters first. The dissident eight and freedom fighters kept the faith because they recognized something. That Bahamians were yearning for something more than they were experiencing. They were proud of those persons who came back home and uh, liberated us from minority rule. But over time, as changes began to occur, they sensed that we as a people wanted more, we could be better, do better. And they stayed the course. And this party, having labored for so many years, 
decided that all of the blood, sweat, and tears that, that they had shared, that they were prepared to continue this fight. And I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm advised that they went and drafted a young Hubert Alexander Ingram. And I'm told that in 1992, deliverance came to the Bahamas. For three consecutive, non-consecutive terms, we governed this country. And despite the revisionists in the Progressive Liberal Party who would like to rewrite history and tell stories about us having not contributed to the fundamental development of this country, you know and I know, the modern Bahamas benefited from accountable, transparent, free national movement leadership. The ecosystem and infrastructure for this country was transformed under our leadership. We exploded the imagination of young people because they saw possibilities, that it was okay to have a righteous restlessness about what was going on in the country and to go on a radio station and say what you wish to say uh, about a leader. But they recognized that their spirit was free. It was a watershed moment in our country's history. And we lost at some point. But what did we do? We regrouped, retooled, and returned to government. And so in 2017, Dr. Hubert Minnis, with a small group, some of you are here tonight, no name recognition, no, no name face recognition, but you stayed the course. You weren't the moneyed, the degreed, and petty greed, but you stayed the course, and you worked with Dr. Minnis. And we pulled off one of the most unlikely dramatic victories in Bahamian election history. It is amazing what we are able to do when we decide to collaborate with each other. Politics and life being what it is, you know, the world is a, it's a cycle. We suffered a crushing defeat recently. Clearly looking at you and listening to you, your spirits are not crushed. You're disappointed. You're hurt. You're bruised because here is a government that has this notion that anyone who was hired in the last four and a half years must be F and M, so it's perfectly okay to fire them. And we have some ministers will come on television and they sound exceptionally smooth and eloquent, but at the end of the day, the story they tell does not resemble the truth. In urban renewal, it is a naked attempt to replace one group of Bahamians with another group of Bahamians. And the public relations is exceptional. I do understand that they are spending a tremendous amount of money for it. And so they have held up a number of very powerful Bahamians to say, look how mature we are politically. We have we've brought into our midst a number of FNMs. Look how mature we are. And I believe that those persons they hired are in fact brilliant thoroughly prepared Bahamians who deserve to be a part of the nation building exercise. I have no problems with it. But what I do have a problem with is the attempt through a public relations exercise to hold up a very small group of Bahamians as example of their maturity. And then you have a host, a host of women making $250. $300, the sole breadwinner in a house, a husband that is ill and before becoming ill had the ability and the willingness to provide but now finds himself not in a position to support the family but yet that mother who showed up every day, whether it's in urban renewal or in social services in general or the Ministry of Education, they didn't leave, they didn't punch in and, and go to campaign anywhere. None of the certificates were forged. They went through the regular process. Their public relations says that they are politically mature. 
and they are governing for all Bahamians. But the reality on the ground says the misery index continues to be high because of the narrow tribalistic view of an incoming government that promised different and promised better. In four and a half years, the presumption was that every contract that was issued was issued uh, to someone wearing red. Only to find out that they had to pause for a moment because they recognized a number of the contracts were issued to persons who wore their colors. And so they had to become a lot more creative to construct a story on how they would end existing contracts in order to issue new contracts to those who had their colors. And don't tell me, uh, y'all did that before. Well, I can think of a number of notable examples where it did not happen. Ministry of Finance, host of persons hired. Still there today. Still there. When we came in in 2017, they were working. Some of them contracts uh, had expired, but they're there. Ministry of Education, I'm advised that there were hundreds of them, and I'm being conservative, I was actually told thousands, but there were many of them. Many of them are still there, regularized. And let me just say this for the record. In relationships, none of us expect uh, to be judged on the basis of the past relationship your boo or your snooks had. Because if that was the case, most of us in here would not be married or in any kind of relationship. I don't expect to hear this tired argument that why you're saying because at some point it happened under the FNM. Well, the reality is you said it is a new day where we will govern for all Bahamians. So it cannot be right that every category of contract you are seeking to pry out of the hands of Bahamians, who are not political operatives, certainly if somebody, that's all they do, they sign in and they go and they're campaigning, then unfortunately they get what they get. But we're talking about persons who are committed to serving the Bahamian people by way of the ministries, the departments that they are part of. We can, as a country, do better than that. And since they're listening, let me just say this before I get to the point I really want to make. In the financial services sector, K. Peter Turnquist and colleagues passed a number of important pieces of legislation. One of them was the Procurement Act. We also uh, decided that we look at how we can better manage the debt, so we pass the Debt Management Act, Fiscal Responsibility Act. It's interesting that each of the bills that we discuss, each of the acts that were put in place, have some requirements. This government is so arrogant that not even the Prime Minister, not the Minister of State for Finance, but you have public servants who are saying that bill will not make it uh, in Parliament. We, we think it's a waste of Parliament time. We can take care of that. Now, if the government intends to change the law, they have the right to do so. In fact, I'm advised they have the numbers to do so. But until the law has changed, they have an obligation to follow it. And so they have decided that the free national movement uh, did not report as it ought to have all of the COVID spending. So when you ask me that question, that's a simple issue. We had an obligation, we should do it. That's simple. We were wrong. We should have done it. No problems. Now you have an obligation to report all the contracts that have been issued since you came to government and that law was in force. Why are you not reporting? And the brazenness is that we're not reporting and what you can do? It is a pattern of behavior a refusal to comply with the law. That's why folks could leave uh, quarantine. That's why there could be three different versions of a story on the same subject. That's why in finance, three separate persons are talking about critical, life-affecting decisions, and the story can't be consistent. So what do you expect rating agencies to say? What do you expect the bond, how do you expect the bond market to react? If there is confusion on who should be believed. 
Is it the Minister of Finance? Is it the Minister of State? Is it the Financial Secretary? It's a pattern of behavior. All we want is straight talk. Let's keep it real. The carnival came. To date, we have not gotten the full explanation. Now, I believe there are too many critical issues in the country to be bogged down with a carnival. But what is important is to have a clear, transparent answer about how it came, who was responsible, what protocols were not followed. Because it is a carnival with some playthings today. It's an armed shipment or something toxic tomorrow. We have to fix the gaps in the system. Some folks uh, talk about the trip uh, to Dubai. And people are upset. Well, I, 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 was, I was in one of them uh, upset with you for the, for the same reason. I believe it's important that governments continue to do what we have done in the past, which is to engage the international community on a consistent basis to make sure that our interests are represented, that we are promoting this incredible brand that we have. So the issue isn't you reconnecting with the world because we weren't, because that is untrue. We were fully connected. In COVID, there was a fall off on travel for very practical reasons. One, health, safety, and two, money. But obviously the Progressive Liberal Party found that pot of gold at the end of their rainbow. So the question is, when people travel, the persons who are going, are they fit for purpose? Meaning, are they the most suitable persons to represent the country in that particular mission? The meeting that you attend, should the Prime Minister attend that meeting? Or could the Minister of Foreign Affairs attend on his behalf? In some cases, could it have been the ambassador that was already in the region, costing the country less money? So the question isn't about engaging and whether folks are jealous on who goes to the back. It's about making sure that we are making the right decision since we have limited resources to utilize. It is a question of priorities. And one of the priorities of the government today ought to be is to help the Bahamian people with the tremendous uncertainty that we are facing. And I don't believe for a moment that any government in this region has the capacity to sustain a feeding program at the level we did, or unemployment assistance at the level that we did. But it was necessary to deal with a crisis that we had on our hands. The population was told that there was a plan that the Progressive Liberal Party had, and once given an opportunity to govern, they would roll it out and address uh, this issue. We have two problems. One is the very programs that sustain a number of families, they've decided to take off the table. So people are hurting, including their supporters. Hurting. Our brothers and sisters hurting. But the second and more troubling thing is that we have not heard a coherent strategic plan with short or medium term goals on how they are going to create prosperity in the Bahamas so that Bahamians who would rather buy their own food can have some money in their pocket to do what they need to do. See, people would understand if you're telling them that this is the timeline that you plan to introduce a number of measures that you've been thinking about and working on for the last four and a half years while you were in opposition. But having come in the chair, they're short on recommendations and actions that they assured the Bahamian people that they were ready on day one. Now let's keep it real. They roll out some, some cute little things after day one. First couple of months, a number of things were rolled out and it's our fault. It's our fault that, uh, you know, an exigency order all of a sudden could be given and we had some folks who were asking for it for a little while in Abaco and in Grand Bahama. A student who's coming from uh, Abaco or Grand Bahama to come to New Providence to school or somebody who was transferred in their job had to pay some, some bills. And, and that didn't help us after the election when that was reversed. We left some pieces of legislation. There's a host of them waiting to be passed in the House of Assembly. And the PLP is quite shameless. When they introduced it to the House, they forgot that there was another government uh, in the past that actually did the heavy lifting on it. There's some projects that we did the due diligence. Somehow they were in the pipeline when 
the unfortunate early election was called. And the PLP saw the project, made the calls, and uh, they implemented. So some folks are feeling some type of way uh, about us. And so as we celebrate all that we have accomplished, and it has been much, under Prime Minister Ingram, it has been much. Under Prime Minister Minnis, it has been much. But let us also be clear that we made some decisions that resonate in entirely the wrong way with many, many Bahamians. Some of you sitting in here were left vulnerable in the public service. You had no idea that the PLP would behave in the manner they said they had abandoned. I, I want to say, I regret that we made some of those decisions and that you were hurt. And we apologize to every Bahamian who, uh, who's been hurt by any decision that we have made. I believe that decisions came out of the, uh, a place in our heart where often we thought the right decision was being made. But nevertheless, the consequences are real for you. And so we don't hold you responsible for us being in opposition. No, you made a decision that you felt was in your interest, whether it was to vote against us or to stay home from voting at all. Our job convention is to hear and feel the response of the Bahamian people and make a determination that we will make adjustments where adjustments are required. We did not get everything right. And we should be honest enough to say it. And it doesn't mean that we can't tout our record. I believe the team, the team over the last three days, have laid out a compelling case of the work that we have done to empower Bahamians, to increase ownership, to generate employment, or at a minimum, to hold back the tide of despair against the backdrop of Dorian and in the midst of this pandemic. We shouldn't cower in fear. We shouldn't be ashamed of saying what we have accomplished. But similarly, we should not be ashamed of saying some things we did not get right, forgive us. The truth of the matter is we're not like them. There's a gentleman in here who likes to say we are different than them. We are distinctly different than them. It's true. There's a culture uh, that's different. And so it's important for us not to demonize our brothers and sisters from the progressive little party. They're good people just like us. But there is a culture, a culture of enti entitlement. Uh, there's a culture where some of you have told us heart-wrenching stories of sitting at your desk and a minister of state can attack you while you're at your desk with a verbal barrage that I cannot repeat here or in private. It's different because I can't think of an administration uh, past or the most recent one that would tolerate a member of the cabinet behaving in that way. We have an opportunity though to ready this machine so that we can ensure that the kind of behavior that we see evolving and graduating does not continue. FNMs, tonight, as we call up all of our party officers, I want you to hold their hands, to work with them, to ensure that they succeed at the job that they do on behalf of the Bahamian people. We have some difficult days ahead, but let me say this. I believe that we are up to the challenge. The Bahamian people, they're crying out for the transformation of an educational system. Our team members who are here who've worked in education are committed to collaborating with the government in a very measured way to give the best ideas, the best practices we had prior to the meeting office. We ask them to work with us for the benefit of our children. We are committed to ensuring that the suite of legislation we passed on environmental issues, which is the most comprehensive pass in the region, 
that those are interpreted correctly and used to ensure that major development projects are not stymied and held up because of bureaucracy. We're committed. We're committed to making sure that if given an opportunity, that we will improve the ease of doing business. It cannot be right that the level of bureaucracy that exists in the Bahamas continue to exist. We're willing to provide advice and assistance to the government. But what is also true is we are prepared to hold the government's feet to the fire when they are not doing right. And so I'm asking you, I'm asking you to stand with your brothers and sisters when you know, when you know in water and sewage that they were entitled to promotion, a promotion was issued and someone is reversing it. You have to stand with them. You have to stand with every one of the government departments where an appropriate decision is made. One has made in Ministry of Finance. Persons duly got their promotions and increase. And all of a sudden, two persons who ought to know better cannot recall that it was approved by cabinet. You have to stand with those persons. You don't have to figure out if they're FNM or PLP. You just have to stand with them. Or in road traffic where the whisper of uh, persons who wish to have greater access can cause multiple persons not to be able to function in the jobs they are entitled to do. And if one decides that they ought to move, it only makes sense to give a reasonable explanation on why, or at a minimum, move them in a suitable location, not have them sitting home being paid by us. Department after department, we could recite these egregious acts we cannot be silent or not stand with brothers and sisters as they go through what they're going through. Island administrators, exact same problem. FNMs, we're going to call on you over the course of the next uh, several weeks to stand with us as we raise the alarm, this government. We're going to ask the union leaders who are in here. We have no less, no less than six uh, union leaders who are part of this administration. I give you the assurance that the new leadership in the free national movement will be consultative and inclusive. Your expertise will be called upon to advise us and guide us as we make critical decisions and engage in discussions that have the potential to change lives. We intend, with this new team, this, this how do we say it in the Bahamas, this brand new team, to work on your behalf. We believe that uh, arrogance is a poison in political organizations. Multiple administrations have been changed because of it. We will not tolerate it, and in our own lives, we will not exhibit it. We believe that everywhere in this organization, everybody matters. And you don't have to fall in love with me to have access to me. I work for you and I will serve at your pleasure for as long as you would have me. And rest assured, the day you make the determination you don't want me, I wouldn't be fighting to the nail, left, right, and center, east, west, north, and south to hold on. In this convention, we saw on display some incredible uh, talented Bahamians who love this country, who shared their heart, who made a commitment to this public that we hear you, we identify with your pain. We, if given another opportunity, will do better. Some persons had a long list of some, a number of, of persons who uh, uh, could have made the speaking list. Obviously, we had a limited amount of time. <laughs> but let me say this. I don't believe that there's any reasonable person who would draw the conclusion that we had some talented, some powerful men and women who graced this stage to share their heart with the Bahamian people. Quite frankly, you have ushered in a generational shift. You have ushered in a generational shift.
The shift would not make sense if any of us decide who are younger to become arrogant, to think for a moment that those persons who guided this party for years are not absolutely invaluable to us continuing. We need our MCMs. We need Prime Ministers Ingram and Minnis. We need Tommy Turnquest and Desmond Bannister and Peter Turnquest. We need all of those who have served in the past. But let me say this convention. Come out of your comfort zone. You have a new team in place. And while we owe tremendous gratitude for those that came before us, we do not owe them our future. The future is one that we have to chart together. We have to write this story together. We have to determine what the strategic plan and plan of action is together. So Papa will help us, but it's our assignment to make it happen. And so tonight, I just want to say to you, keep the faith. When one of your party officers don't return your call right away, I'm still asking you to keep the faith. When somebody comes in your office and tells you to leave because they got somebody else uh, that they won't put in that position, pick up the phone, call us, we come in, but keep the faith. Don't suffer in silence. If you're hurting, while we are not entirely responsible for every bill you have to pay, we do not want you to suffer in silence. This is your family, let us know. We're here for you. We are where we are because of you. You've hoisted us on your shoulder. You delivered us to parliament. We are there because of you. We're prepared to stand with you and speak and act on your behalf. God is gonna be with us. He was with us all the other times we lost the election. But we have to be faithful. We have to be diligent. And I believe we have a deputy leader who fits that description. I want you to give Shannon Dawn Cartwright a hand as he comes. We have a chairman who is fearless, articulate. Give Dwayne Sands a round of applause as he comes. We want all of our officers who this convention has elected to stand with us as this convention stands with you. Join us. This is the team. This is the team that's going to make this party ready so that we can lay out a strategic plan for prosperity to fix a broken health system, to make sure that public-private partnerships can ensure that Grand Bahama and other islands finally get the airport that they deserve. Give them a round of applause as they come.
let's take this moment, let's take this moment to pray. God and our Father, we thank you. Thank you for three good days, successful days. Thank you for those who were chosen to serve in this great party. Now God, we ask you now in the mighty name of Jesus, give us the faith, the trust, and believe that we can get it done. We pray for those persons who were elected, that they will do the best they can to serve. We pray, Father, that they will rise up and work. Thank you for this new leader. Thank you for the ability that you put in him. Thank you for choosing him for this time and this season. Thank you for the deputy that you've chosen to work with him. Thank you for the chairman that was chosen today to work with him. Thank you for all the men and women whose shoulders we stand on. Now, God, we believe that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord. Thank you because we believe that all things are possible. And so tonight, as we prepare ourselves to work, tonight, as we prepare ourselves to move forward in unity, I pray tonight in the mighty name of Jesus that the light will shine upon us once again. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.